In this video, we address the question of finding all primitive roots modulo n if there are any to be found. So a common problem that might show up in homework or on an exam is something like find all primitive roots mod 13. What you can interpret that as in identify all elements of a reduced residue system mod 13, possibly not required, but possibly the standard reduced residue system mod 13, which are primitive roots. As long as the base in question isn't unreasonably large, it's possible to do this problem with brute force by manually computing the power of every element of the standard reduced residue system. Mod 13, for example, and we're just going to compute powers and powers and powers, reduce mod 13 until we find a value of 1. That will help us find the order of every element of the standard reduced residue system. Once we found the order of every element, you simply identify which of them are primitive roots. So, 1 is already equivalent to 1. Next, I'm going to take powers of 2. Okay, so I've got them written out here. 2 to the first, 2 squared, 2 cubed. 2 to the fourth is 16, but we're working mod 13, so that's equivalent to 3. To get the next power of 2, I just multiply by 2. 6, 12. 24 is equivalent to 11. Multiply by 2. 22 is equivalent to 9. Multiply by 2. 18 is equivalent to 5. Multiply by 2. 10. 20 is equivalent to 7. 14 is equivalent to 1. Ultimately, 2 to the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12th. Okay. So the order modulo 13 of 2 is in fact 12. So 2 is a primitive root, so let's stick it up there. 2. Okay. Not 1, however. Next, powers of 3. 3, 3 squared. 3 cubed is 27, but mod 13, that's 1. It only took 3 steps, not a primitive root. Powers of 4. 4. 16 is equivalent to 3, multiply by 4, multiply by 4, 48 is equivalent to 9, 36 is equivalent to 10, and 40 is equivalent to 1. Great, so the order of 4 is how many steps this took, which was 6, not a primitive root. 5, 25, multiply by 5, multiply by 5, so this order is 4. The order of 6, however, 6, 6 squared is 36, that's equivalent to 10, multiply by 6, 60 is equivalent to 8, mod 13, and so forth and so forth. Take my word for it, this takes some time. But we do find that 6 has order 12 as well, as does 7, but not 8, not 9, not 10, 11 does, but not 12. So I'm glossing over this because it's a lot of computation. It is technically feasible. What we found was that the only elements whose order was 12 were 2, 6, 7, and 11, so there are primitive roots mod 13. Any integer equivalent to 2, 6, 7, or 11 modulo 13. That's a pretty bad way to do this problem. Okay? Even for a relatively small base like 13, it would have taken a very long time to go through all of that computation. But remember that the order mod n of a is always a factor of phi of n. So for n equals 13, the only possible orders are factors of 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So a primitive root is an integer whose order is 12. So if we can verify the order is not 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6, then it must be 12. So for example, let's compute powers of 2 again. 2 to the first is not equivalent to 1, so the order is not 1. 2 squared is not equivalent to 1, so the order is not 2. 2 cubed is not equivalent to 1, so the order is not 3. 2 to the fourth not equivalent to 1, so the order is not 4. However, I don't really need to compute 2 to the fifth. Why not? Because the order can't possibly be 5 anyway. It's got to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or 12. So I compute 2 to the sixth as, for example, 2 to the fourth times 2 squared. 3 times 4 is 12, not equivalent to 1, so the order is not 6. Well, if the order isn't 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 6, but it had to be in this list, hmm, it's got to be 12. I can stop computing now. Now that I know the order must be a positive factor of 12, but it wasn't 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6, the order has to be 12, so 2 is a primitive root. So that's a possible improvement. It allows me to cut down some of my computation. But once you have found a single primitive root mod n, the problem of finding all of them is actually done. So suppose you find a single primitive root. Well, we know that the powers of the primitive root exactly create a reduced residue system mod n. 
usually we're going to replace a to the phi of n with 1 or a to the 0. So we list them out as 1, a, a squared, all the way up to a to the phi of n minus 1. This is assuming you have found a primitive root a. So rather than work with the standard reduced residue system, let's instead work with this one. We really only need to be working in a reduced residue system. I don't care which one. Let's work in this one, powers of a primitive root we already found. Because we already know that if a is a primitive root mod n, a to the k is also a primitive root mod n, if and only if that power k is relatively prime to phi of n. So for example, given that 2 is a primitive root mod 13, because we did find that, find all the primitive roots mod 13. So we're going to make a reduced residue system of 1, 2, 2 squared, 2 cubed, all the way up to 2 to the 11. The elements of this set, this is a reduced residue system, so any primitive roots that exist have to be in there already. The elements of this set that are primitive roots are powers of 2, where the power is relatively prime to 12. So 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 7th, and 2 to the 11th. There we go. There are all primitive roots mod 13, any integer equivalent to one of these four numbers modulo 13. And now we can really state the final result here. The observation that powers of a primitive root generate the entire reduced residue system mod n allow us to actually quickly find the order of every single element, assuming that we had a primitive root to begin with. So, for example, given that 3 is a primitive root mod 250, find the order of every single element of a reduced residue system mod 250. So phi of 250 is 100. Brute force would therefore require us to take the standard reduced residue system, which has 100 elements, and manually compute the order of all of them. That's going to be awful. We are, however, given that the order mod 250 of 3 is phi of 250, which is 100. Okay, that was a given, given that 3 is a primitive root mod 250. So instead of using the standard reduced residue system mod 250, let's just take 1, 3, 3 squared up to 3 to the 99th, one less than its order. Now we simply state for every element k, the order is given by this formula right here. The order mod 250 of 3 to the k is the order of 3 over the GCD of that order with the exponent k. Listing out all 100 elements is now going to be pretty tedious, but it's not going to be hard. All I have to do is let k go from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 99, compute this GCD, and do 100 over it. It's a very quick computation. I'm not going to do it right here, just in the interest of time but it's very easy now. It's much easier to work in this reduced residue system, powers of a primitive root, than to work in the standard reduced residue system. So let's take a look at a sample problem. Show that three is a primitive root mod 50, then provide a reduced residue system mod 50, specifying the order of every element. Now notice we're not exactly given that three is a primitive root. We are told to show it. Well, since phi of 50 is 20, you should be able to compute that. The order of any element must be a factor of 20, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, or 20. To show that 3 is a primitive root, we just need to show that its order isn't 1, 2, 4, 5, or 10. So we just start computing 3 to the first, not equivalent to 1, 3 squared, not equivalent to 1, 3 to the fourth, not equivalent to 1, 3 to the fifth, 3 to the tenth, also not equivalent to 1. So this modular arithmetic, hopefully you're getting quite proficient at it. This is a little tedious to do out by hand, but it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. So the order of three is not one, two, four, five, or 10. Therefore, it must be 20. So three is a primitive root. So now rather than taking the standard reduced residue system mod 50, let's just take powers of three up to its order. So one, three, three squared up to three to the 19th. Since 3 is a primitive root, this must form a reduced residue system mod 50. And now we can compute the order of each element in this table here. I'm just going to go through every power of 3, identify what the exponent was, compute this GCD, then state the order mod 50 of 3 to the k is the order of 3 divided by the GCD of the order of 3 and that exponent k. So going through one by one, if k is 0, this GCD is 20. If k is 1, this GCD is 1. Here, the GCD is 2, 1, 
and 4. So if I divide 20 by that, we get 1, 20, 10, 20, and 5. Okay, next up, I'm leaving out the column for k. It's pretty immediate. Okay, so the GCD of 20 and k would be 5. Here it would be 2. Here it would be 1. Here it would be 4. And here it would be 1. So 20 divided by that is going to be 4, 10, 20, 5, 20. Continuing on, the GCD is going to be 10 or 1 or 4 or 1 or 2. 20 divided by that gives me 2 or 20 or 5 or 20 or 10. And finally, the GCDs are going to be respectively 5, 4, 1, 2, 1. 20 divided by that gives me 4, 5, 20, 10, and 20. So we have now specified the order of every element of a reduced residue system mod 50. We can close out with a fairly interesting little theorem. If n has primitive roots, then it has phi of phi of n of them. And that's not actually a typo. So suppose a is a primitive root mod n. Then I can form a reduced residue system mod n out of a to the 0 through a to the phi of n minus 1. An element a to the k is going to be a primitive root mod n if and only if k is relatively prime to phi of n where k ranges from 0 to phi of n minus 1. So the question becomes, if there is a primitive root and I can create this reduced residue system, how many elements of it are primitive roots? How many exponents are relatively prime to phi of n? As I go through 0 up to phi of n minus 1, how many are relatively prime to phi of n? That's exactly phi of that number. So in our problem, we're going from 0 to phi of n minus 1 and asking how many are relatively prime to phi of n. The answer is phi of phi of n. This is pretty unusual. Uh, it's not common for a function to be composed with itself in this area. Okay, So phi of phi of n. There are other areas of math where composing a function with itself is the entire name of the game, but you probably haven't seen it very often. Phi of phi of n showing up is a neat little surprise. So one quick example to use this theorem. For each n from 10 to 22, determine how many primitive roots there are modulo n. Now remember, we've classified which bases have primitive roots. 2, 4, an odd prime to a power, or 2 times an odd prime to a power. So we already investigated that list and saw that 12, 15, 16, 20, and 21 don't have primitive roots at all. Okay. 12 is 4 times an odd prime power. 15 has two distinct odd prime factors. 16 is a power of 2 that wasn't 2 or 4. 20 is an odd prime power times 4, not times 2. And 21 has two distinct odd prime factors. So these numbers don't have primitive roots at all. The other numbers do match one of the forms above. For example, 10 is 2 times 5, or 2 times 5 to the first. 11 is 11 to the first. Okay, so we've already gone through this list in a prior video. So since the other numbers from 10 to 22 do have primitive roots, they must have phi of phi of n of them. So we're going to complete the problem in the table below. So for 10 through 16, so we've already established that 12 is not of this form, nor is 16. So it has no primitive roots. Also 15 has two distinct odd prime factors. It has no primitive roots. 10, however, is of the form 2 times 5. So the number of primitive roots it has is phi of phi of 10. Phi of 10 is 4, and phi of 4 is 2. So 10 will have exactly two primitive roots. 11 is of this form. So how many primitive roots does it have? Phi of phi of 11. Phi of 11 is exactly 10 and phi of 10 is 4. So 11 has four primitive roots. Similarly, 13 is of the desired form. It will have phi of phi of 13. Phi of 13 is 12, and phi of 12 is also 4. So 13 will have four primitive roots. 14 is of this form. Phi of phi of 14. Phi of 14 is 6 and phi of 6 is 2. So 14 will have two primitive roots. Continuing, 
17 is of this form, 18 is of this form, 19 is of this form, 20 is not, 21 is not, and 20 is. So 20 and 21 have no primitive roots, that's quick. Otherwise, phi of phi of 17, that's phi of 16, which is eight. So 17 has kind of a lot of primitive roots, it's got eight of them. 18 is of this form, so phi of phi of 18, phi of 18 is six, and phi of six is two. So 18 doesn't have very many primitive roots. 19, Phi of phi of 19. Now phi of 19 is 18, so I have phi of 18, which we've already shown is 6. Finally, phi of 22 is 10, and phi of 10 is 4. So we can quickly determine whether a number has primitive roots or not. It has primitive roots only if it matches one of these forms here, and if it does have primitive roots, it has phi of phi of n of them.